Suscribe, dale like, comparte. Notificaciones. Comencemos. Of seekers of the supernatural. You are now standing in one of the most haunted houses in the world. Allow me to show you the Halloween room of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Here you see some of the artifacts, some of the collections throughout the years that Ed has gotten. Some skulls, things from ancient Scotland. We're going to come around this way and we're going to look at some more objects of Halloween. These are a lot of collections that Ed got through the years from people who've generously given to him on his birthday and haunted houses and people who've just kn known that Ed was a, an officiato of Halloween. As we walk down this way, you can see his latest, which is a big monster figure that he got on, his, on Ed's 70th anniversary, I should say 70th birthday. And over here is a giant birthday card that was offered to him on his 70th birthday on September 7th. But this is a fun room, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said before, welcome. My name is Tony Spera. We will now be entering the haunted passageway, perhaps entering the most horrific part of any area, any square mileage of any part of this world. So come on with me, and we're going to walk through the haunted passageway. I would never do this if it was after 9 o'clock at night. Follow me through here, Rob. As you can see here, it looks almost like a dungeon as we progress through this haunted passageway. Sounds like the Hound of the Baskervilles. A lot of Ed's paintings are hanging on the wall uh, he, that he's done throughout this, his 40, 40 some odd years of painting. Now we're entering probably the most horrific part right here. This is the occult museum, perhaps the most haunted area, I would consider the most haunted area in the world. Over 45 years of collections of voodoo dolls, occult practice objects, satanic ritual objects, witchcraft objects. I would have to say, with all due caution to viewers, it's not a place you'd want to stay at night. It's not a place you'd want to stay for any length of time. We're going to take the time for the tour. It's before 9 o'clock, so we're all set. Between 9 p.m. and 6 p.m., it really, 6 a.m., it really gets bad. But I consider this to be the most haunted area in the world as we enter. perhaps the most haunted area in the world. That's what I would say. I would say that it is one of the most haunted areas because of the many things here, Tony, uh, that come from all parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Europe, uh, Asia, America, Canada, Mexico. This is a collection of items on the occult that have been used in diabolical uh, experiences by many different types of people into black magic, wizardry, sorcery, and so forth. These are all things that you then would consider evil, Ed? Oh, positively. In fact, this is not a building that you should be in after 9 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. uh, from 9 to 6 are the psychic hours. This is not a Halloween room. This is the real thing. Okay. Many of the objects in this room here um, have had dire effects on people. People have been maimed, have been killed. Uh, People have wound up in mental institutions because of many of the things they write in this building here. Mm -hmm. You have the voodoo dolls, you have the uh, Raggedy Ann doll, which was responsible for the death of a young man who came in here one time, <clears throat> uh, who challenged the doll to do its worst, and it did. Then you have a detective um, who was almost killed right in this room that we're standing in, and a priest. When we first panned in this room, I guess uh, Rob was on the witch. Can you tell us a little bit about what... Yeah, that's a model... Uh, Mannequin of Hannah Crana, our local witch, mm -hmm. who died in 1845. Uh, many of the farmers over on Cross Hill Road, which is just about maybe a quarter of a mile from here, 
uh, would go along in the morning and she'd st sit up on this big rock and she would say to them, if you don't have a pie for me tomorrow morning or a dozen eggs or a hen, I'll curse you. Mm -hmm. These guys were so afraid of it that they would have that hen or that pie. And the Indians in this area were so frightened of her that they left here. She also said that she did murder her husband, who was Joseph Hovey. Uh, he was an officer in the uh, local, uh, I guess, what do you call that? Constabulary? Yeah. Militia? Militia, Militia that's it. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, and to the right of me, and I see there's a, a mirror. Can you tell me about that mirror? That's a magic mirror that a gentleman used in New Jersey to conjure up spirits. That mirror, as we know, is a reflection of spirits. Okay. Ghosts, apparitions, demons, devils can reflect their images on a shiny surface very easily. Mm -hmm. This was used for that purpose. Only the man who did the conjuring, unfortunately, today is in the mental institution. Wow. Okay, why don't we step over this way? How about this organ right here? That's an interesting piece. Oh, I didn't know. That was uh, in the most haunted house in all of New England, which was Stratford, mm -hmm. Connecticut. And uh, they called it the Stratford Wrappings. Uh, it was so famous, Tony, that they actually had in 1850 a carriage at the Bridgeport Police uh, or uh, the railroad station, mm -hmm. and it would take people all the way to Stratford to see these hauntings, which was the Reverend Phelps House. This is a painting I did of it down here. And uh, uh, Hannah Crana, the witch, and Another witch by the name of Goody Bassey, Bassett, Bassett were very involved in black magic at that time. In fact, Goody Bassett was hung near the old railroad station uh, for her witchcraft practices. But this organ was in that house for many years. A gentleman had purchased it. He collected organs. But when it started playing on its own, he wanted to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And he called me up and told me where it came from. Mm -hmm. And he'd like to get rid of it. So I took it. And we've heard this organ play three times the strains of it coming up through the passageway into our Halloween room, up the stairs, and into our bedroom. Wow, that's amazing, Ed. Ed, I want to point out these, these statues. Are what yes. are voodoo dolls? These are fertility dolls from Africa. Over here you see the uh, one which is covered with human blood, mm -hmm. and there are seven of them that were stolen from a witch doctor. You do not steal things from witch doctors ever. Mm -hmm. Now, the man who stole them died a terrible death. The man he sent them to, who was right in Bridgeport, Connecticut, he and his wife suffered for two years and then finally died. You don't steal things from witch doctors. I'd say not. Why don't we head over this way, but while we're heading this way right here, I see this book here. This book, it says Book of Shadows, Necromonicon. Yes. Can you tell me what that is? Yes, that's one of the original Books of Shadows, which were written in the uh, medieval uh, days. And this one here was translated into English. Just the reading of that book has had terrible results for many people. This is not a book that anyone should ever buy, a book of shadows. It goes into the incantations of devils and demons and rituals. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? Uh, what, does this signify anything here? All right, you notice uh, there's a mask here. It's a typical Halloween mask. Right. But the problem with this is that many people buy these masks and they use them actually in black magic. This one was put on a person's head, they looked into a mirror, they took the mask off and they visualized themselves as looking like this. They created a physical manifestation of a tulpa. Wow. Isn't that wild? Mm -hmm. This here scares me. This one right here, Ed. The Raggedy Ann doll. Yes. That's probably the worst thing we have in this whole museum. That Raggedy Ann doll was given to a nurse in 1970 by her mother as a Christmas present. Mm -hmm. But as most girls do, even 28 years old, she would take the doll to bed with her, wrap her arm around and go to sleep. I do the same thing with a pillow. But then she started taking it to the breakfast nook where the arms one morning went onto the table. Mm -hmm. Now she lived with another nurse and they uh, shared the expenses of the apartment which was four blocks away from Hartford Hospital. Right. At that point, they told the girls about the incident, and one said, I know a medium. So they held a seance that night. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning of many seances with this doll. Uh, they would come home at night, and uh, the woman had told them, the medium, that there was a spirit of a six-year-old child in the doll by the name of Annabelle, who had been killed outside of their apartment house in an automobile accident. Mm -hmm. Well, there was such a child, but God does not allow a child spirit to go into a doll. 
This was a devil, a demon, inside the doll, which was impersonating the spirit of a child. Well, they treated it like... Hasta pronto.